Kevin O'Connor, thank you so much for taking the time. I really do appreciate it. Oh, no problem. Um, so you were you were very gracious to be my first interviewee back in back last year when I first started doing interviews, and back then I wasn't doing them on video. So I appreciate you making an encore appearance for for folks that might not be familiar with Find the Best. Um, what uh, give us a feel for the value prop and then what progress you've made since we talked last year. So I mean, most people know about kayak.com. You know, it's an incredible travel site, kind of a new model, giving total control for the user to figure out their, their travel. Right. Uh, we're kayak for the other thousand big decisions in your life. So we're a, you get a major decision like what college I should go to, which dog I should buy, which fertility clinic I, I should uh, go to and try to have a kid. Uh, we help you make those big decisions by giving you factual, objective data, uh, and you can filter down your choices, and then ultimately select what's best for you. Mm -hmm. So it's literally, um, literally find the best. And I know you're all about solving big problems, um, double click and ISS two billion dollar uh, exits. Clearly, you see this is a is a huge opportunity, um, and I and I absolutely agree with you. Um, so you're you are really well liked by the press to say the least um even your latest uh, uh you are even your you, latest uh go, go back ahead. 10 years on the privacy i was i was not well liked well you well you were um you you got a lot of coverage back then as well <laughs> not always not always so positive exactly um so even your recent appearance with Chris Dixon on you know, TechCrunch i must say I had half a dozen people that asked me if i'd seen that so i know that that had tremendous reach um, what what suggestions would you have for young you know young emerging entrepreneurs that want to get out there and are really trying to get press attention? What are some suggestions you might have for them? I mean that's a tough one. I mean one thing I learned at DoubleClick, you know, you you can you can we got a, a ton of press attention in the beginning it was great, but mm -hmm. it can also come back to bite you when when all of a sudden you're the leader of an industry, then something controversial comes up. You know, the, you're the one to go to. Right. Uh, uh, yeah, I think so, a lot of times. People focus too much on trying to get press attention uh, and not focus enough. You know, they're more busy promoting themselves and uh, as a, uh, promoting the company as opposed to just building a great product. I mean, if you build a great product, you get a lot of a lot of users. You're getting a lot of people talking. You can get a lot of notice. I mean, ultimately, that's really what you got to do. Mm -hmm. uh, I get constantly reminded. People will say, uh, "Time Magazine just came out with a bunch of sort of top 50 websites." Uh, and I went through a lot of those websites, right? And and, and we're going through a uh, redesign right now, and people are saying, "Hey, you should look at." Uh, I'll give a, a great example: Hipmunk. Uh, Hipmunk is is often held up as it's like kayak, but a totally different visualization of data. Mm -hmm. Often held up as sort of a great a great site, the way sites should be. But if you look at the traffic numbers, it's just not doing that well. So so people can get caught up and and they get tons of press, so they can get caught up in and getting listed as a top site, but at the end of the day, you know, are you bringing traffic? Are you bringing users? Are people coming back? I mean, that's by far the most important. Yep. Well, I'm always telling my students, focus on your value prop. The rest will follow. You know, don't obsess on the name. Don't obsess on the color. Obsess on delivering incredible value for the dollar, and, and you'll you'll end up doing fine. And, and it is a little bit easier getting press these days because um, because I because I mean, we we were kind of the start of the the whole internet thing and. And uh, I was I was gone for a while, so I'm kind of like the, you know, whatever happened. To, <laughs> the reunion know. tour. <laughs> exactly. exactly. The comeback tour. Um, well, you, you are known for your, your very frank um, interviewing techniques when you're hiring new people. Um, share with us some of some of the, um, share with us your approach and, and the reasons underlying it. So there's really two approaches. One of the, one of the things, I'm an electrical engineer. And one thing that always intrigued me, the, the theory that I thought was coolest in electrical engineering is that you have a black box, uh, an electronic circuit. And in order to find out, you can find out what's in that black box by giving it an impulse function. So in other words, an infinite amount of energy in an instantaneous time. And you can find out everything that's in there. And I was always really intrigued. I thought that was a cool concept. And human beings are a black box, especially when you're interviewing them. And you're trying to figure out what is inside, what is inside that guy's head, what makes him right. a tip. Uh, and so I kind of uh, apply the impulse function. Uh, sort of the two by four between the eyes, and to try to figure out how they're going to react. And you know, some of it is provocative to try to get them to, you know, break under pressure, or see how they, you know, if you can get them off their game. Uh, but primarily, what we're really looking for are what we call smart athletes. I mean, people that have not necessarily went to the best schools, but are really street smart. People that that high have I have IQs of solving problems. 
Uh, so we ask a lot of logic questions. Uh, and the other ones, we want competitive people because, as you know, you've done a bunch of startups. Uh, you know, there's a lot of times between success and failure are, you know, those, those people that can take the pain, uh, go through, can handle the pain barrier, have a higher threshold of pain right. than the other guys. Yeah. And a lot of times it's the last man standing. So we're really looking for that competitive, competitive spirit. Yeah. I, I'm the same way. I, I, I see it as an issue of personal pride. Like I want to hire people that are pissed off if they don't succeed. I and mean, they certainly have a company mentality and they want everyone to succeed, but they take it personally. And I think if you have a crew of people that take failure personally, you're not going to fail. And I think you raise a great point. You know, you look at it, it's it's not that people want to win so much as that they don't want to lose. You know, right. winning is very fleeting and winning is sort of an instant. Losing is with you forever. So, so those, <laughs> those guys are just really against it. And then the other thing we really focus on is, is um, you know, in some ways a startup is like you're finding people that want to be SEALs, Navy SEALs, right? You want to find that 1% that have, you know, they're really looking for uh, you know, they may die, you know, they, they gotta, you know, they could be, uh, they gotta be work constantly. They have to be, uh, they, they could be tortured. I mean, they, you know, they're just, they're looking for that, that, that experience. And we'd rather scare away the 90% of the people that, that, that have this romanticized view of what it's all about. Uh, right. Again, you start ups, it's, you know, looks great on the outside when you, when you're a huge success, but you know, it's a bitch, you know, it's, it's a lot of hard work. Um, so we'd rather filter those guys out. Totally. Yeah. Can you yeah. share with us some of those two by fours that you knock people over the head with? Um, oof, the two by fours. Well, if I do, then they'll know all the. I mean, we definitely. That's why I love talking to your class. I mean, people who are looking to do a, a startup entrepreneur uh, that 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 have a really passion for doing entrepreneurship. Uh, and the fact that I want to, you know, older guys been done a bunch of startups. Uh, that is one of the draws. I mean, to hopefully help you, but I, and I'm really this is going to be my last gig, mm-hmm. probably. Uh, and I really, <laughs> really want to teach it when it comes in. I mean, just everything I've learned. But on the flip side, I really want to learn from them. I, mean, well, I think the one, of, as, as you know, one of the biggest risks of getting older is you, is you, you think everything is the same, you know, you think that, oh, you know, we didn't do it that way 20 years ago. Well, things are different, you know, and, and I, I struggle with some concepts even today, you know, like social media, you know, I kind of understand it. I get in there. I want to really learn it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then I also find out even t- talking to your class, I mean, even they struggle with social media, exactly right. what is it and what role it will play in their life. Exactly. Um, well, I think we, you know, you and I have been around a block enough to know there are no silver bullets, um, you know, it's just it's small incremental steps and, and small incremental knowledge. In your case, I mean, you wrote The Map of Innovation, which I use in my class, um, a real good book and highly recommend it. At least you can sort of slide that across the desk and say, here, you want to learn my secrets? Uh, <laughs> read the book. <laughs> oh, that's an advantage a lot of people don't have. Um, yeah, the- and as you know, you know, the secrets are really so obvious that they're yeah. not even secrets. I mean, it's, it's, it's the obvious that we always forget, you know. I mean... Businesses are real simple. You solve a big problem, and you solve it better than anyone else. And if you do that, you know everything else is really incidental. Right, right. Um, people yeah. focus though on, you know, hey, I got to know. It happens, as you know. You, you gotta, would you rather bet on a, a top engineer who can solve a really complicated problem, or a guy, you know, who who MBA can do a, you know, uh, internal rate of return or an NPV or something? You know, it's, just, it's like that stuff's just not that important. Right. Uh, it's important when you're in a billion dollar company, but. We do in a startup, it just doesn't really matter. Yep. No, I think uh, you're right. The ultimate secret is that there are no secrets. Just yep. work hard, <laughs> focus. <laughs> so you, I know one thing you talk about in the map of innovation and in my class is this idea of fads versus trends. I think your track record once again uh, indicates you have a pretty good radar for that. Um, if you look at the, if you look at the the what's out there today, what's being talked about. What would you parse out as a fad? Is something that's sort of going to come and go, and what's a trend that's that we should keep our eyes on? That's always tough because uh, I mean, fads come come along. As you know, there's there's always a, a thousand things that come up in in every day in technology, um, and you can spend all your time chasing these things and never really amount to anything. So I think you have to have a level of cynicism. And we actually play a lot of practical jokes here in the office. One, it's it's fun, but it's also to kind of teach people, you know. If it's too good to be true, it, it really is. It, it really is not true. Uh, uh, as you as you said earlier, there's no such thing as magic bullets. Right. Um, so it's really uh, 
having a, a layer of, you know, one is, is, you know, when PCs first came out, trying to figure out, is that a fad or a trend? Well, to me, it was so obvious, you know, that's going to be a trend because it solves a real problem and it does it really economically. The internet was so obvious that it was, you know, painful, you know, having access to the world's knowledge, you know, for free for anywhere in the world. I mean, that's yep. obvious. Uh, but it wasn't obvious back then. Um, things that get a little less you know, t today, you know, cloud computing. Um, that's completely obvious. That's going to be that's going to be gigantic. Mm -hmm. uh, mobile computing, but apps. Apps is a is a big trend, and I think apps is not the is 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 more of a fad than it's going to be a um, a, a trend. I think mobile uh, web is going to be far bigger. Um, and I think this is playing out. I mean, you see it, the, the churn rate on a particular app. Apps are huge. It's like 90% after three months. You know, never, never touch it again. Right. Um, I think a lot of the stuff, you got to be really skeptical of, of, of social. I mean, especially social marketing. I mean, it definitely plays a role. Uh, but when people can't prove it, you know, we've talked to a lot of social marketing firms. Like, mm -hmm. okay, prove it. You know, give right. me something that, that can be scaled. Give me something, you know, you put a buck in, you get two bucks out. And people really struggle. You know, it's it's more of a faith. Mm -hmm. When anyone anyone says faith, you know, you got to believe in it. You know, I'm just I become real suspicious. Yeah, faith is code for no or ROI. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, what's your favorite practical joke that I find the best? Uh, favorite practical joke. Yeah, there's a lot of them. But there was a homeless guy in our. Uh, that was kind of a mean one, though. There's a homeless guy in our bathroom. We were downtown, and they're always worried that some gun's going to crawl into our bathroom. And so, I was the homeless guy. Scared the crap out. <laughs> so, what did you do? People walked into the bathroom, and then you did what? To get the guy out, and just kind of jumped out at him. Angry homeless guy. Well, Kevin, thanks. I really appreciate your time. Uh, I know my readers are going to enjoy this. Tremendously. Not readers anymore, John. They're My viewers. Viewers. <laughs> Some people actually read the uh, summary that I write. So, Here, all right, yep. Kevin. Thanks again.